Hey it's Hank, got this Dixie Chopper LT2400, gonna do a little service to it to get it ready for the summer. First thing we're gonna do is we've got it jacked up, we've got a jack stand in place because you know what we say, never trust your life to a jack. So we're gonna pull the blades off of it. Got a, uh, a 15 16 impact socket. Gonna, uh, got three blades under here. One, two, three. Pop those blades off, we'll sharpen them. We're gonna hit every grease fitting that we see. Gonna pump them full of grease. We're going to lubricate any moving parts. We've already checked the oil. The oil looks good, looks clean. No need to change the oil. We'll pull this air filter out and blow it out at minimum. And uh, battery's good, had to charge it it started the first time, but it started every time since then. I think the battery's only a year old, so the battery's good. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Impact wrench is by far the easiest way to remove blades. It doesn't get easier than that. Now look, take note whenever you take off a blade, Take note of how the washers are stacked up because you want to put, put them back the same way. I've got two on top and two on the bottom there. These blades are super dull, so we'll sharpen those up. Let's get the other two off. If you are a do-it-yourself mechanic, the first thing you should save up for if you don't have one is an air compressor and an impact wrench. Makes so many jobs so much easier. It's not just a, a, a luxury. You can uh, show this video to your uh, significant other tell them the Hank says you need an air compressor you need an impact wrench all right so we got three blades off here they're identical and we're gonna lay out the uh, we'll keep the two washers on the bolts there and the two there for the top We'll just lay them out here where we don't lose them. All right, just sharpen these blades. Okay, always wear safety goggles or at least safety glasses when you're using a grinder. The idea here we want to get one plane, so we're going to try to go back and forth and, and uh, try to hit the same angle, get one angle all the way across there. So this takes just a little bit of practice, but it's not too difficult. Just try to keep the uh, blade on the grinding wheel. Don't lift it off and check, put it back, because it'll be really hard to get back on the exact same surface. So just look for the top edge. You'll see more intense sparking when a, as the blade gets sharper and sharper and you look for that and you keep moving because you don't want to get any hot spots you don't want to ruin your tempering on your blade by getting it too hot so keep it moving don't lift it and put it back and go until it's sharp so we're looking pretty good got one nice angle fairly sharp Use a little bit more, right? Use a little bit more right there on the edge, but that is uh, pretty good. Pretty good for no fixture. We're gonna hit the other side.
Okay, that is a beautiful job for no fixturing right there. So we'll do that to all three blades. You can see the difference between a sharp blade and a uh, dull blade. That is rounded. That is nice and sharp. Like I said, one, one face. Not that that matters, but it just makes it look a lot better in case someone's crawling around underneath your lawnmower. Looking at your blades. Ha ha. All right, we're gonna put the blades back on. We've got the washers stacked up the way they were. Now, keep in mind the sharpened edge should be closest to the, uh, to the ground. So, if they were on like this, that wouldn't make sense, right? Because this would be hitting the grass. Yeah, the sharpened edge closest to the ground. We'll get these uh, bolts started by hand. Never start a bolt with an impact wrench because it's really easy to mess up. <clears throat> Good and tight. Blade number two. Don't know if this is even in the picture or not. These days, I'll get me a cameraman. Or one. Camera person. And then we'll do blade number three. Down there. Start them. While I'm down here, I'm looking for grease fittings. A lot of mowers have grease fittings up here on the uh, spindles down below the deck. This one does not. All right, so that's that. I'm going to inflate the tires uh, while we've got it here. This one says 20 PSI. So that's what we'll shoot for that range. Maybe it's a little less. Let's see. It's a little low. It didn't have didn't show any. I'm going to 18. 18 PSI looks pretty good. If you overinflate, your ride will be uh, more rough. Besides, that's the maximum pressure for that tire. Meaning, regardless what this tire is on don't inflate more than 20 psi or you are in danger of it exploding i'm sure it's rated to go a little above 20 but that's what that rating means that is not the recommended pressure that is the maximum pressure you don't want to ever exceed that pressure on a tire whatever it says on there on a car for instance the old truck here these tires say somewhere maximum 80 psi now i don't want to run them at 80 psi on a car you look in the door panel there'll always be a sticker rear tires they want you to run them at 35 psi and the front tires on this vehicle is also 35. now that is what ford in this case decided for handling roll over all the different things that go into account when they're figuring your tires and what pressure that's what they put on that sticker cooper made those tires ford made this truck so cooper made a tire that can withhold 80 psi of pressure but ford says i want 35 psi on this truck to give you the best ride and load handling and all that so you always go by the door sticker not by the rating on the tire Gonna do the same thing on the rest of the tires. Just gonna check them. I'll go a little bit below 
the uh, the max pressure on all the tires. I'm gonna check the oil. So we just pull the stick out, wipe it off, push it in firmly, give it a second or two, pull it out, and we are up above. Oh yeah, we're up above the, uh, the fill line here slightly. Let's try it again. It wasn't a real clean pull. There you go. Yeah, it looks good. It's, it's right there to the full line. The oil is uh, fairly clean, so we're gonna leave that for now. <clears throat> Let's pull this air filter. Some clips here. Three, two, two clips. All right. So we'll blow this out. blow this off that one looks really good so what we do what I do so I'm just gonna blow this filter off um, blow it from the inside out yep. another reason you need an air compressor you can save all this money on filter. So if you can see light, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but look up into the can into the filter, you see light all the way around. That's a good indication that it's not uh, terribly clogged. So blowout on this one's fine. It's all dry. We don't need a new filter. We'll put this one back in. So blew off the uh, cap here. So this just shoves on there. Let's keep this, well it says top right there. I was gonna say keep this toward the bottom. good so I'm gonna find all of the uh, grease fittings get on them and pump through you see the old grease coming out it means that works full on the wheel here I'm gonna go around every grease fitting I find on this. I'm going to uh, fill up. Wipe everything clean when you're done. So there are some grease fittings on the top side of these uh, spindles. Be sure to get all three of those as well. I'm gonna give us a test drive. I, I when I pulled it up, I noticed I had to push further. I think on the right side than the left side to uh, to, to go straight. So there's an adjustment here for that. I'll have to take that uh, pin out and spin this spin this out a couple turns. So I'm going to double check that now to have the proper air pressure in all the tires. I'll double check that that's still an issue. If so, I'll make an adjustment on one side or the other. So I did check and the right side just a little bit behind the left is 
going forward. So pull the pin out of here. I'm going to uh, just lengthen this. Oh, we'll go two turns, two full turns. Um, tighten that uh, lock nut back up. Stick the pin back in here. But stubborn. There we go. Stick that back in there. So I find that by adjusting the linkage until both bars come back to the same distance um, without the motor running, because I was getting an offset here, so now they're the same so that problem should be solved so there you go that is uh, kind of like the minimum things you would want to do to your mower uh, before the mowing season is upon you so I hope you enjoyed this video if so please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on how that works with Hank Baugh